Is this the best value starter set for Warhammer that they've done in recent memory? In as little as 30 minutes, you can get playing. Why does this box exist? MDF terrain like this, I'm taking that every single time. This is, this is either underpriced or the other starter sets are overpriced. Hello everyone and welcome to Paint Perspective episode 74. GW have released uh, one of the most exciting starter sets in a in a hot minute, I would say. Uh, all of that to come in this episode as well as our usual segments, of course. Uh, but a couple of hobby updates, I think. It's been a couple of weeks since we've sat down to do one of these. Yeah, we had to had to That's record true. a few just due to holidays and other things, didn't we? So uh, yeah. it's good to sit down and now just have some time off. Yeah. We yeah. didn't really agree with it, but you just went off on holiday somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Didn't see you for a week. Sorry. Well, you Very guys get to just willy-nilly dip in and out of the podcast, but as a producer, I don't have that privilege, I'm afraid. So <sighs> Perks of the job. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very, very true. Yeah. That what have you all been, uh, been painting? Do you want to go first? I, I haven't. <laughs> well, since uh, my Blood Angels Lieutenant, I've got like two things on the, on the, on the hobby table, um, and they are both in the built on the bases and undercoated phase and they've been like that for a week. Okay. So that's it's fine. kind of... You've uh, got to let that paint cure, Paul. That's right. So, I've got to make sure it's absolutely so, dry yeah. before I start throwing washes at it. No, I just... Uh, life gets in the way sometimes. I've been to too busy to even sit down and uh, grab an hour here and there. Um, but one of the things is obviously for a little event next year. So I can't really talk about yeah, it. Yeah, you're not allowed. You're allowed oh, you started already. You started. Well, you started. Well, well, was it, was it they say the first rule of Iron Skull is you don't, don't talk, talk about, about Iron well, Skull. Well, yeah. well, not Starcat. you two. <laughs> Starcat, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it started, but very slowly. I'm going to, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a long burn project. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very long burn by the start good. of it. Yeah. You got eight months or however long it is. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. That'd be right. yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. That's I know, good. Right? Yeah. Very, very, very exciting. Cool. I've gone, uh, I've done the rounds on my iron skull entry for next year. Cause I was like, I'm definitely going to do this for it. And I started painting it. And I was like, I'd rather just finish this now cause I'm having fun. So I'll probably, I'll think <laughs> I'll of something, something else. else. Yeah. That's future yeah. me's problem. But, I'll uh, probably do the same. I'll paint this one and then think, Oh, that's a better idea. I'll do that one. Think of it like a warm up, you know? Yeah. Cause I know in like four months time, I'll look back at it and think, actually, I could paint a bit it's better than this. Not so. qualifying like in F1. Like, you, you, like, no, no, it is. Definitely is. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I know I'm, I'm not even in qualifying. I'm in free practice. <laughs> Qualifying's to come, James. Yeah. I'm still putting you, the wheels you're doing, on. You're doing, you're, doing, you're doing the wiggle, warming the wheels up. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, the, uh, the, yeah. the tyre heaters off. Yeah. <laughs> so in the car, If you yeah. put a tyre heater on a model, I'd be very worried. Sponsor for a vehicle, yeah. Let alone a painted model. No, you'll be fine. Good to know. That's very exciting. Yeah. I have not thought of mine yet. I am. Uh, I don't know if I'm entering staff cat or not. I don't <gasps> know. I don't know. Nonsense. No, I don't. I genuinely don't because I think that you're I don't gonna, know. You're afraid you're not going to. Well, be no. Us. It's like year year one, so 2020. Like I, I was very lucky to win uh, in staff cat, and it, it kind of, I don't know. It kind of feels a little bit like not right running it. Hmm. running the event even though you're not judging it seems a bit awkward. yeah it feels yeah. a bit like i don't know if i just i like yeah because like when i when i when i did win obviously in staff cap year one in 2020 i i didn't get like negativity but people were like what you into drone painting competition i went well yeah i can because i'm not judging but then i thought about it i was like well it kind of yeah it's kind of a little bit hmm. gray area i think i don't know like you know hmm. so so I think I don't know. Well, I'm gonna I'm know. gonna re I'm gonna think and reflect. And Let then, us know yeah. in the comments what you think. Yeah, uh, should yeah. I or should I not? I think you should. Uh, it's your event. I think you should enter something. But ha I think you should well, paint it badly. Well, so ha no, handicap. Handicap. Have to paint yeah. right-handed. That, that 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 might be. Is that? A, are you you're left-handed? Yeah, you? I am. Yeah. So it's a handicap. And, and blindfold. Yeah, you're already handicapped by being left-handed. To be honest. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you <laughs> left-handers, defend me in the comments. No, yeah. No, I think you should be blindfold. Or paint me your left foot. How about that? <laughs> I'll get your eyes done Move, with that. Moving mate. on, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I have actually, yeah, I did have a bit of time off, and um, and I managed to get some painting done, which is good. So I've, I've rekindled wow. um, as per one of the previous episodes. Um, I'm shifting my sole focus onto just comp stuff. I James couldn't handle the pressure of the army painting challenge, so he had I know. to chickened out. I think was the word. I think it? that's what they're saying. Yeah, that's that what, what they're that's saying. What Paul. The kids are no, saying on the street. You know what? Lots of people. I mean, lots of people in the comments are like, "Yep, yeah, I totally, totally understand that vibe," yeah. and that's that's fine. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, I um, I, you know, I thought. Look, let's make it a fair competition. Let's let's let's, George, <laughs> let's give the other guys a chance. Let's, let's, That's what you're let's, saying. Let's see what George and Joe get up to, and, and then yeah. and then look, you're painting. You technically, you're you're neck and neck with George. <laughs> you're you're two models in, and George's only seven models in. So it's not that many that many difference, not, yeah, you know. Well, I don't know. Um, no, uh, but all, all jokes aside, I yeah, I, I just rekindled something that I uh, have been 
are hoarding and collating all the little parts and miniatures and things for mm. like you know um so there's there's this big sort of like diorama that i wanted to do and uh you know it's been sort of like Having tiny little movements of progress over the years and so I feel like I've been hearing about this diorama yeah, for about it's like a stop motion project, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. literally like a stop motion yeah. project. Yeah, that's just me playing with the figures, <laughs> going pew pew, <laughs> one, one, one brush stroke a day <laughs> yeah. for the next six yeah. years. Yeah, no, I um, I, no, but I rekindled it and I started um, I started painting uh, the next couple of models for it. So yeah, it's been mm. it's been more fun actually. Um, mm. yeah, I've had a lot of lot of fun with it, like just painting stuff which uh, I've always wanted to paint the models and. I've had them locked away in a, in a cupboard for a long time, and, and in then the dark somewhere, yeah. you know, waiting to do them. Hopefully, some justice, and I still probably won't. But like, but uh, <laughs> but but um, I think it gets to a point with uh, we can talk about this later in the post show. But I think it gets to a point with some of those projects where you can always say I'm not going to do it justice, or like it will be better later, and you just keep yeah. kicking the can. But you got to do it eventually. I, I think, think the thing is with this because it's quite a, quite it's quite involved. And it's got quite a few components and bits to it, and there's like two sides, obviously two factions. I want to spoil it. We'll talk about it later on the po in the post show, but. Um, one thing I'm conscious of is actually pacing of painting because the thing is, is obviously once you get warmed up and limbered up and you're in the zone of painting over, mm. like if you're painting every day, you get obviously more in the zone obviously with muscle memory and stuff. It's trying to make everything consistent. So like everything is like looks to the same standard or looks the same if you follow me. Otherwise, like what happens is your painting progresses over over a big long-term project in the first couple of models. I was going to say, yeah. How do don't you, look as I good as that. We're you know, talking about in the post thing, but like how do you... Make sure that you're consistent over a, like a six month to eight month time span where your your abilities progress. That's that is the yeah. difficult thing, yeah. Otherwise, you just go round and round and round and round and round. So it's like across like, the yeah. the board is like, well, this is where you started and this yeah. is where you finished. This yeah. bit is gold and this bit is not. It's very, it's very <laughs> similar when you do like a squad light entry or whatever. Like if you if you do, if you paint them individually, what can happen is the first one. Looks oh, that like happened with me on my Black Templars yeah. for GD. I yeah. painted the I had to strip the first one because yeah. by the time I got to number five, I was like, it's noticeably <laughs> different. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that is the hard thing about it. But yeah, so that is something to be conscious of. But yeah. Um, I'm really, like I said, I'm really pumped for it. It's something I've always wanted to do. I've had this idea for it for so long, and I'm just like, right, I'm going to do it. So good. Hmm. So yeah, so it should yeah. be fun. So um, so yeah, I've been doing that, and then um, and then just I've actually been making like loads of bases and stuff, having a lot of fun with bases recently. So just just having fun with bases. Yeah, yeah, just really trying to just like I think that's one of the like again the whole reflection thing like we spoke about in another episode is like looking at the way you approach stuff and looking at um and just looking at like where you know you have like one of those pie charts that has like the vision of like where you're like mm. things like I, I kind of tried to look at where my painting's at and go right well I'm happy with how I am at this but like what areas am I like take up a lesser smidge of the pie chart and it's like basing's like two percent as in like investment of like making it more interesting so yeah, yeah that's an area that I want to grow right. you know yeah, um, on a bigger piece of that pie bigger piece of the pie exactly yeah, yeah. exactly that so cool. so yeah so basing is is the the soiree that I've been trying to involve myself a bit more yeah. recently so. that's a whole hobby in itself isn't it making a oh a, honestly a, a, i lost a, i lost a whole day literally yeah. just making bases yeah. for a hobby this hobby does have a lot of hobbies within the <laughs> yeah, hobby. yeah. Hobbies yeah it's like hobbies. hobbyception yeah. Know, it's kind of uh, a hobby within a hobby in a hobby in a hobby in a, in a hobby exactly <laughs> <laughs> If you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2,200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6,500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable, so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. Main topic this week then, the new Warhammer Kill Team starter set has come out. Is this the best value starter set for Warhammer that they've done in recent memory? Yes. Yeah, and I Straight hope up. that's all the information you need. <laughs> yeah. so, Straight um, up. Yeah. I, I guess we'll do like a little bit of background. So for those of you who aren't aware, it's the, uh, the box behind me. It's on pre-order now. Uh, thank you to GW for kindly sending it to us for a review. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got it on the table in front of us here. I know you can't quite see on camera. But um, we was all quite blown away when we saw this yes. starter set coming in. Because yeah. it's basically, it's Kill Team, simplified slightly in terms of 
I think you get like a slightly thinner rule book and it's like a little bit stripped back in terms yeah. of the terrain and stuff you get. But it's two full kill teams, like no, nothing stripped back there. And they're mega kill teams. And they're mega kill teams because yeah. they are Warhammer Heroes That's right. miniatures, which was um, the little blind boxes that they've done over the course of the last few years. And they're, they've been unavailable until now. So they've been quite expensive to get hold of on the second hand market. So they're back and they're in one box. And on top of that, you get both of them and a board MDF terrain is I know, back. I, That's I'm exciting. So glad, I mean, MDF terrain is like crazy good. It, and I, I like I have seen it in like a couple of videos and stuff. I haven't seen it in hand yet and I can see it just off camera. Hmm. And it looks amazing. It like, looks good, yeah. like scenery back in the day, like when when like when I got the second ed box, first second ed box, you had cardboard terrain with it, which That's was, right. which was which, well, is, which was fun days. to make, etc. Yeah. But this is like really like pop out. MDF, 30, yeah. MDF terrain, um, which has got really high quality printing on it. It's actually interesting that they've almost like printed on painted scenery onto the MDF. It's just, it just looks great. It doesn't look like that laser mm. stuff. It's literally just got like a printout stuck to the MDF and then it's punched cut so that you can literally just rip the pieces yeah. out. Um, In initially, right, this might be a bit of a hot take, but I actually like it when starter sets have less stuff in them. Because if you want to talk about like value, right? Everyone always loves it when you get a huge box with just tons and tons and tons of plastic in yeah. it for a great price. Everyone loves that. I totally understand that. But as someone who has tried to get into multiple game systems over the years, mm. especially Kill Team, which yeah. I tried to get into with uh, the 2019 version. When you started, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 But having so much stuff to do before you can start yeah. playing the game is a real obstacle. And with these as well, something that I haven't actually seen a lot of people talking about is the plastic for each kill team is coloured and they're push fit models and you've got yeah. MDF terrain. So basically, the in terms of time to start, yeah. like you could literally buy this on a weekend, start building it on like the Saturday. You'd have it all done by the end of the day and oh, Sunday you'd be playing the game. Well, the idea around this set, according to their own sort of blurb, is that you can get the box and in as little as 30 minutes you can get playing. Yeah. So the whole that's, that's why you got all this pop out scenery and bits and pieces. You haven't got the plastic stuff, which you have to sort of paint and all the rest of it. It's just well, it's like having it all the, together. It's like having the plastic yeah. scenery because it's as I said, it's literally that, but like printed onto the MDF yeah. that you punch out and build, so it looks like the painted stuff. I mean, but, MDF, but the idea is that you just punch it out, put it together, and it's ready you to don't go. Have to punch you it, don't, you don't have to punch it. <laughs> 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 it's funny though because this doesn't get talked about a lot, but me and James. <laughs> had a bit of a, a reality check when scenery. With, yeah. with scenery because you think of terrain and, and game scenery pieces as being like something kind of like an afterthought a lot of the time aren't they like of course board. it is yeah, yeah. and me and James had the very very naive idea no, that it's just scenery it's like, just scenery yeah. we How thought, we, thought we would build a whole big set for the studio mm. in a weekend and we managed to build a bit of it yeah and Prime some. Prime it and we didn't start. get very far. Yeah. It takes a long time. As yeah. if, well, they're just as, uh, if you look at the, some of the scenery pieces that you get in some of these start boxes, they're just as detailed as, as miniatures. As the yeah, miniatures 100%. Are. Yeah. Although you don't really, I, I suppose, compared to the miniatures in the boxes, you don't really give the scenery a second thought. Well, well I was going to say something like, honestly, I, I, I think there's a whole myriad of different types of scenery you can buy out there. Obviously, like you've got the MDF. 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 You've got, you got the MDF laser yeah. cut terrain that's available from various places. Which is typically not printed like, no, in colour, is well, it? No, but what I was going to say is if you gave me the option of MDF terrain like this, yeah? Yeah. Or the MDF terrain that's lasered that I've still essentially got to paint and got a detail and I'll do with that. Yeah. I'm taking that every single time. I, Even if the build of it is like not as varied and it's quite yeah. sort of like you get like maybe four or five different sets if like, if you could get terrain kits that were literally just and it's a bit sort of almost sort of 2d ish yeah but um but if you can get to if i could just buy terrain kits like this yeah. i would be over the moon with it and, like, and in addition to that it's storage wise you yeah. can yeah. Flat pack it again yeah. put yeah, it back yeah, in yeah. the box yeah. I, I as much as like look getting the hero boxes and stuff or the hero miniatures in this starter set is amazing it's yeah we'll really get to the miniatures in a minute obviously like, but i think the scenery is actually one of the most overlooked parts of the box. Everyone's like, oh, you get the Nurgle, you get that sorcerer, you get the captain, you get all that. That's great. Like, they're amazing. And we'll talk about that. But I, when I first saw the set, I was like, that scenery is fantastic. Mm. I didn't notice like, initially from the like sort of overhead product shots. I didn't even notice that it was MDF terrain straight away. It just looked like 
some mm. scatter pieces. That yeah, on the well, this is that's the beauty of it because it's got the printed designs so exactly. that are literally painted yeah. bits of scenery. Like yep. it, it, the illusion of, of it being that is there. Like you know, um, and, but yeah, I, I, th- I, th- I said I, I, I completely segueing off of the the box. If scenery kits came like this. I'd buy these all the time. Yeah. Like, uh, didn't they used to do things like this for um, like Warhammer Old World back in the sort of the nineties and things? Didn't they have like push push out? When was I'm not sure. As as the the Warhammer historians of of the office, when <laughs> was the last time GW just done MDF terrain in general? They've never they've done. done they've, they've never done MDF. Yeah. They've done card. Yeah, uh, get card. Plastic ones in. Third I know, like ed way box. back in the day, used to get like the paper. Second ed was card. Like, yeah. yeah. Third ed was plastic. It's when the jungle terrain and the first those those That's corner right. ruins yeah, came yeah. out. Fourth edition. A fourth edition. I, I don't think you got anything. Because in, in, since I've like, been in the hobby, they've fifth won, box. They've definitely not yeah. done anything. They've, like not, done, they've, not, done, they've not done that before. I've no. never seen that. I've never no. seen that. Like obviously, I've seen MDF, but I've never seen like layered printed MDF punch it. It's really interesting the way that it's done. And like I said, I don't want to go into a really weird segue, but like. I know I've been around a lot of laser engraving and laser cutting, obviously with various things in the past. And like, I don't actually know how that's been done because you have to laser it to cut the sh- to cut the shape out or to punch the shape. Mm. But then it's probably printed afterwards. But, I, but I don't know if it's printed. Yeah. Well, then you've got to line it up so that the the print goes on the lasered or the on the cut. It's really it's, interesting. It's like the, 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 the two layers of paper are stuck to bonded the sheet on first, it and then it's cut, then it's cut maybe out. yeah maybe. i mean it's all computer guided isn't it it's not yeah, like yeah, yeah. some some someone but sat there either way <laughs> I, i'm just i'm, I'm I, I it sounds really it's good a yeah. null point but like, i i'm i'm actually super super pumped for the scenery I am as well. yeah, yeah. Like, and um, also it's obviously as evidenced by the price <laughs> so i think in the uk this is launching at 67 pounds 50 which is that's mental about half of what the big boxes normally cost at launch yeah. which obviously have more stuff in them don't get me wrong but in terms of like an accessibility point, yeah. if you're someone who's literally got nothing and you want to jump into, because everyone always says like, oh, Kill Team's a, a great gateway game or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not a lot more expensive than just buying a Kill Team. Yeah. Not not far off. No, I don't no. think I don't think you're, you're wrong with that I think when, when this dropped into, came into the office, obviously, you know, we get to unpack these things. And uh, when I saw the sheet of the cost, I thought there was a one missing at the start of that. <laughs> um, given, you know, that most of the sets come in. So yeah, I mean, it's a really good price for what you get. I I, I mean it sincerely. It's like if you're, I think it's really good. I know there's, I know there's a lot of various opinions, and we've had mm. obviously, so so we've done some reels and stories before, obviously about obviously value and things like that. And I don't want to drag that whole thing up again. But what I would say is that like this kind of like proves that it's possible to create a box that offers really great value. And value again is a thing that can be determined by multiple people yeah. in different ways. But just from just from being involved in in the industry and in the hobby for such a long time, these models are fantastic for their like variants of the of detail, interest. Like you've got the Nurgle, obviously, you've got old Death Guard, you've got obviously the Marines. But just getting a great set of miniatures and a great scenery to play a game for that price, like a lot of the models in second ed and third ed, obviously the third ed was the first time they're multi pose, etc. But second ed obviously was all clipped together just like mm. just like this. But the, the posing was was all very similar. Like, yeah. obviously each well, was I would have thought just if you'd have told me there's a new Kill Team starter box coming out and yeah. it's going to have MDF train or whatever, I would have just assumed that the two Kill Teams within it would have been a set we already had. Yeah. yeah. Which this is to a degree, but this is a bit more interesting because this isn't just one that's like off the shelf or been in like a previous starter box. It's bringing back something that was out of production. Yeah. 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 And something that had. Quite, I mean, a, quite a good fan response, I would say. Yeah, but the, I loved, I, honestly, the, when they when, when these the Marine heroes came out, that captain, I know I painted it, but that captain for me was one of my favorite mm. models. Like, uh, it, yeah, abs- absolutely love love painting that. And model, the Death so. Guard ones were really popular when they yeah, came the out. Yeah, Death Guard. Years I, know, back. I mean, you love Death Guard. Yeah, so I, like, you know, they were great. Like, yeah, um, almost cried when I couldn't get them when they uh, <laughs> first came out. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago now, it was wasn't it? Now. Yeah, two, two, yeah. two. Was it two years? Two, yeah. two bit years? Two years. I think so. Yeah. But I, I do. Why does this box exist at that price? Because if you look at other starter sets from the different game systems that they have that are either exactly Comparable. the same price or similar, this seems now even one. This it's even, you can even look at it at one or two ways. This is this is either underpriced or the other starter sets, which are you know same price, are overpriced for what you get content wise. Do, do, do you know what it is? I mean, I, I I think personally, like you've got various things that have led into this, and I think like obviously with Space Marine 2 coming out, I think it's been timed very, very well. Like with Space Marine 2 coming out, obviously and being the launch of Space Marine 2 and obviously people four, I think was it I saw a post the other day like four point five million people playing it. Like mm. like 
Uh, and that number, I think, has probably obviously gone up since then. But I think it's been timed really well that like that game's come out. You've got a lot of people that are obviously into the hobby anyway and are aware of it that obviously think this is great. And then you've got a lot of people that are like, oh, wow, like there's a whole gaming side of this yeah. like, with physical miniatures. This is like the perfect product to then take that first leap into yeah. miniatures yeah. and painting and gaming, obviously, like not the video gaming or computer game, whatever you want to call it. Um, like it, it's perfect to do that. And to do it with such such great looking miniatures, I think is a really good targeted specific thing. The other thing to think about is like potentially obviously margin as well. So like obviously that all products have have margin obviously for profit for businesses. Mm. And like maybe they're just not, they've, re, they've just reduced down the margin they're making on it to make it more accessible for people, for people. as well, potentially. I don't, I don't know. Like, but I think it's a really clever play and a clever set that's been put together. But now the, the problem is, this set is 6750. So whenever anything else is released now, I'm going to compare it to this set and, and judge that set on whether I think that's value for money or not. So having, having a glance at GW's website, there are a few other starter sets at £67.50, the same price point, but they're slightly different and I'll tell you why. So we've got Warcry has a starter set, which is the same price. It's Warcry. So it's... And fewer, more miniatures, hmm. fewer miniatures, fewer um, miniatures, but this is real plastic terrain. So I'd say it's yeah, but there's, kind there's of made only up eight pieces in there. It's not sure. Much so it's there. made up. It's got fewer uh, like miniatures to move around, but then hmm. it's balanced that out by having plastic terrain. So I'd argue similar value, perhaps. Um, then you've also got the Age of Sigmar starter set, which has more miniatures but no terrain at all. Hmm. Then you've also got uh, the Dark Tide board game, which I would say isn't quite the same because it's a self-contained thing. That's Whereas right. with yeah, Kill yeah. Team, you can use these Kill Teams yeah. and match play with other players. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also in addition, no terrain. Mm, so yeah. finally as well, there's the 40k starter set, which is the mm. same price. No terrain, more miniatures, but they're the like easy to build ones from Leviathan. So yeah. again, yeah. it's like... You could argue it's the same in terms of like what you get or even better value because there's more stuff there's in more it, especially for starting an army. Yeah, especially for but it's kind of a different thing, isn't it? But yeah. um, it, one one thing that I find is is potentially interesting with these is even if you're not looking to get into kill team, I think this is a really interesting pickup actually because as I like to have a lot of like, I don't, we've got like obviously the pile of shame stuff and the backlog stuff, yeah. stuff but I like to have kind of like little palette cleanser miniatures, little like self-contained stuff. Everyone loves that. painted yeah. characters. And the fun thing about these is they're on individual sprues yeah, because yeah. they're the Warhammer Heroes models. Every yeah. single model is its own little sprue. That's right. So yeah. if you if this is a pickup for you and you're not necessarily interested in Kill Team, you've got a whole bunch of unique individual sculpts yeah. that are completely different from each other. Yeah. And you can treat this as just a little self-contained little project. Character, that's yeah. It, yeah, yeah. yeah, Well, that specific one you picked up is actually one of my favourites other than the captain. It's the guy reloading with the sergeant model, which I think is amazing. He looks mm. super hard. So like, he's yeah, just just really great model. But you're quite right. Like, You can do some really cool things. I think the other thing... And is because well, there's no terrain in the box, you're not like paying for extra guff, if you get what I mean. Like, Often there'll be a starter yeah. box that I think is really cool and I like the look of the models. But you're kind of paying for a lot of stuff you don't want, yeah. even though it's a good like value. Yeah. I'm still paying for that terrain that I don't care about. I'm still yeah, paying for that right. book that I'm not going to read. Yeah. I'm still paying for that other faction the that dice, I don't the want. Cards, that I need the counters. Yeah. Do, do you know the thing with this as well? And again, sorry to touch upon it, but like I think the other thing as well is because the miniatures that are in the box are the miniatures that they are, as in they're the hero sets. Like hmm. that limited edition feat, that limited edition nature of them previously, and now like releasing the floodgates of them being available like to anyone for a very low economical price. I think it's actually it 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 does give a more perceived value in the sense of the quality of the miniatures. Yeah. And and I was touching upon it and sorry to turn this into terrain terrain fest, but <laughs> it doesn't feel that that is an afterthought to the miniatures. It's also no. something that I think has a lot of They probably thought, well, how can we keep the price as low as possible yeah. as a if, start? Set? If they was doing that sort of stuff all the time, I'd be like, yeah, it's just some terrain through it. Yeah. But because it's something they haven't done so before, unique. yeah. I find it quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think I do think it's very good. Uh, and again, like the thing is is like for someone getting into this, it gives them a really good entry point that Yes, obviously it's it's you you've got a lim you've got two factions. It's not like a, you've got more different things obviously in the box. Um, but but what I do think that is very good about it is that you get the clear cut 
these are the really good miniatures. Mm. This is the really good scenery. You've got your board. You've got everything in there for that price. A lot of the sets that you were talking about maybe didn't have certain things. With this, you get every aspect of it. You get the scenery, you get the miniatures, you get the board, you get the dice, you get all your law and information. You get your absolutely everything in there for the starter set. Mm. Kill Team is the best way to get into 40K if you've never played 40K before because it it's... There's an accessibility. It's, yeah. it's yeah. way more granular. Like a, and I'd say this is like... A, a refinement of that because it's like if you want to get into 40k let's start with kill team you buy this little box and has everything That's you need right. in it yeah, yeah. now it's like okay well you buy this box it's got everything you need in it but it's like an easier version of that it's colored plastic so you can start playing with them straight away i presume you want to paint them because they're fantastic miniatures yeah, yeah. but like it's just that starting point for example like i said i tried to get my friends to kill team before failed miserably this is i actually i think i might pick this up because i've got a friend who really really enjoys the building side yeah. of things but doesn't so much enjoy the painting. Obviously, yeah, you can spray your models and stuff. Don't, I know yeah. you can just spray them all one color and get on with it. But the fact that this is just, you it's all to. there. It's all done. Yeah, don't need like, to. The, the other thing is uh, the, about the heroes is that they, they're, all the bases are sculpted, which I yeah. think is yeah. one, of the, one of my favorite things uh, about these specific miniatures. They're really, really interesting detailed sculpt. Like we love the, the bases heroes, are phenomenal. Like, 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 irrelevant of the miniatures like, and how yeah. good the posing is and like just the option, like the, the posing and stuff that you have on them. Um, and they do also have different options. I know it sounds silly, but again, touching on that sergeant model, it's not like it's got one stock head. You've got a helmeted version. Yeah, and got, and I think head. all of you these like, actually have um, every a bare head and a helmet. Two head. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, only down, the only thing that kind of annoyed me a little bit with this set was as soon as I looked at it, it, ref it doesn't refer to it. Obviously, that these are the, the hero sets. Yeah, yeah. From, it doesn't refer to any of these miniatures by their names. What, as in the, ca the, yeah. the, yeah. the, the kill names. team? What, so, like, yeah. like, like, kill team Justin like, or whatever. Or, yeah. or, I did whatever. notice that. So basically, when these were available as Warhammer Heroes, you know, you get the little they cards They all have their own them. name. Yeah. They had a unique character name. Are they not called their names in the, no. in the book? No. Like, they're above, all called like no. Death Guard or Death, Death Guard Marine One. Death Guard like, Bob. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're not called by their character names from those sets. I mean, fair. I mean, I don't know why... I don't There's, know. The Space Marines would have been like brother something something. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean. Brother yeah. Sequitious. Yeah, yes. or whatever they're called. But yeah, fair. I don't know why that's the case, but again. And that kind of thought, oh, well, that kind of upset me a little bit. Well, because they lost their character. Because they, right? yeah, I, uh, they're characterful anyway, but they're having their names is. Maybe they've just gone like, maybe some of those names, the pronunciations and stuff like that. It's just, it just, for someone getting into it, learning the language of. The, the, the law and all that kind of stuff to start off with is just another potential small barrier. So they've just gone right. We'll just call it kill. We'll just call it Space Marine kill team. Well, and I guess. Then, and well, night, but what about Gerg from the plague? Uh, the, uh, the plague reigns. Gerg. I mean, that's not very Roman, is it? Is it? You know, it just. I, I just thought. Well, oh, it's a bit sad that they haven't put the names on the box at least. No, fair. Whether you choose to learn them is up to you. It might. It? You've open, got a whole rule book there to learn. Yeah, but someone might want to call that. That might want to call Gerg. Jim. Phil, or well, like, we'll call you it know, Phil, or, or, but put it on the box. <laughs> I mean, come on, these they've spent all that time designing and sculpting these things, sold them as heroes with their names, and then don't put them on the on the kill team box. I, it'll be interesting to know whether the, whether, whether the kill bit. team just is it Justian? I think it is. Or, well, it used or, to be. It's not now. No, no. <laughs> but what I mean, it'd be interesting to know whether that name still applies for when you use that kill team in kill team, or if that's purely for this starting box that they've, yeah, they've you removed might be, yeah, it. it could be. Yeah. So when it was Warhammer Heroes. The idea was if you bought the whole set, if you collected them all, That's right. you would have Strike Force Justian for the yeah. Space Marines. That's it. Nice. Now, as part of removing all of their names, mm. uh, this is now the Angels of Death kill team. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and Plague Sad. Marines, I think, when they were in the Warhammer Heroes, that predates them getting kill team rules. So oh, I don't right. think okay. that the uh, Death Guard Marines got kill team rules when it was the Warhammer no. Heroes. They were just characters. I think if you, wanted a death, if you wanted a Death Guard kill team, you literally just made your own yeah. Yeah. bits and pieces up. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I just think that they've just tried to remove any kind of like thing that would for someone, the someone that someone that knew coming into it would would see as a little bit of like oh oh like, or remembering stuff. It's just like, yeah, you know, I think that's the thing, okay. and I think that's probably why a lot of the names have have, have, have changed. But but um, well, but, we, yeah, <laughs> I'm 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 literally to use an ergo appropriate word pun, but I'm buzzing for it, and and I think that. <laughs> I think that you do get loads of little flying things. I'm festering for Look at the little creatures you get. I know, right? These little creatures. So like, they're good. amazing. We've, I can't uh, wait to paint them all again. <laughs> we've, uh, well, we've gushed over these a fair bit. Let's I get know, to right? some, of the more, some more talking points. So um, how do you feel, Paul, as someone who had the Death Guard heroes? And they were like a limited thing. I was overjoyed. I, when that box hit, when I opened the, the, the massive uh, GW box that they send for everything, it's got one paint in it. I, <laughs> I opened this and I saw that and I thought, are my eyes deceiving me? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> so I didn't tell anyone this was here. I was like, I thought I'm going to have a look in this. So I, I, I thought, 
this is great. Why, you know, these guys are here. Uh, immediately, I looked at all the names and was disappointed by the lack of names. I'm, I'm interested but, by that though because I. It's good that you were excited because I've, yeah. I've seen a lot of people that had these miniatures previously are a little bit jaded that what they had was this like limited collectible thing. Yeah. And now it's kind of open to the masses. It maybe devalued them a little bit. But that happens That happens with lots of things. Like yeah. look at Space Hulk. Space Hulk come, came out. It was a limited release. It was very popular. People were bummed out they didn't get a chance to pick it up. So then x amount of years later, it gets done as a limited yeah. re-release. I did. So like, as soon as I saw them in both sets of miniatures, I thought, why are these in a box? Because I thought these were like a limited run. I think that adds to the hook of it, though. Of course, like, yeah. Like it's, it's, I'm, it's, I'm thrilled that these things exist because obviously... Yeah, but flip it around the other way. What about what about poor poor Johnny that like missed out on getting this sorcerer yeah. and like like to get one now on eBay, you've got, to, you've got to pay crazy scout money to get it. Like now... I guess, though, if you're... If two months ago you happen to be unfortunate enough to pay over market value. Yeah, yeah I guess there hand. is that as well. I could see being a little bit miffed. But... You're not going to, you're like, look, then you're, they're just not going to please everybody. And that, and that's no. something that unfortunately is just not I think for the realistic. majority of people, it's a good thing because there'll be it a is, lot of yeah. people who missed out on that set who yeah. couldn't get a hold of it. But I, I'm quite keen because obviously I, I painted this set, not this starter set, but obviously the, the, the hero, the Death Guard hero set, more or less right at the start of me paint, learning to paint yeah. and things. So I'm quite keen to repaint them all <laughs> and have like this. See how you progress. See like yeah, a, yeah, like that's, a comparison that's great, thing. Yeah. So, uh, and I mean, I mean, what was, I mean, the set was about 40 quid, I think, last when they, they first came out. So f for bargain for money wise, I mean, it's great. Yeah. I like, I, I am super, super keen. As I said, like the, I've got the, the sergeant model at home to paint for, for various different bits and things that I want to paint him for. Um, the captain, obviously I painted that. Like mm. I, there's some really, really phenomenal models in here. And like, even as you said, George, just as a painter, like if, if you get this, you can then easily just pick one or two and paint them over time. Or if you are new into it, you can, they're, they're great for just getting paint on as well. Like I think the other interesting thing just to touch, mm. uh, touch upon it as well is that like, because of the different factions that are in there, you've got in the obviously death gun and you've got Marines. There's also, it also contributes to different ways of painting. So for example, with the Death Guard, because yes, they're armored, et cetera, but because they've got so much more biological stuff on them with all the, the growths and wibbly bits and like <laughs> tentacles and all those kind of things. <laughs> yeah. It, it's also a really good benchmark to start and go, right, well, I, I maybe I want to paint it like the box. So I'll, I'll or I want to paint in the style of the box. So maybe the Marines are better to do that. Or I just want to get some quick paints, throw them on and then just do dry brush them. The te more texture and stuff that's on the Death Guard ones will suit that better, for example. So I've actually got yeah. a um, one of these models, actually, funny enough, as a work in progress at the minute. I've been painting mm. it for the last couple of weeks. And it was really funny, actually, because I thought, I've never actually really painted Death Guard. Maybe it might have done a long, long time ago, but not like in recent memory. And I thought it would be more similar to painting Space Marines than it actually has turned out to be. It's not, it's in quite a very fun different. way. Yeah, because yeah. aesthetically, there's a lot of similarity. Hmm. but Because of the armor. Because of the armor. Yeah. And it's, you know, a dude in armor with a gun, right? Yeah. Fair enough. But in terms of like textures, tones, skin tones, flesh, all the materials on there, it's been a really, really fun challenge to paint because it's one of those, if you're somebody who paints a lot of Space Marines, it's one of those models that's, similar enough to what you're used to that you don't feel like completely out of your depth no, and like, not. like you're struggling yeah. but it's different enough to kind of get you working yeah. for it a little bit and do you know what, I, you, you showed me the pictures actually the other day of the work in progress and do you know what one he's painting? Gurg <laughs> I mean who doesn't want to paint a Gurg? Do, do you want do you want some alone time with, with Gurg? You're like, I know, you're like, <laughs> me and Gurg <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think with the Marines as well, they've they've been really clever and obviously with the design of this, it's that they're not chapter specific as well. Yes, obviously the box art is Ultramarines because it always will be, which, yeah. is, which is perfectly fine. Um, but you can literally, because of them not having any specific sculpted details, you can do pretty much anything with them. I think that's one of the things with all the heroes, obviously Death Guard or Death Guard and, and you, you can paint, but even within that, you can still paint them as different different parts of Death Guard. Do you know what I mean? Well, like, I mean, even... The Space Marine Heroes, I think we, we painted them in the office, didn't we? Yeah. We did the yeah. uh, successor chapters, didn't we? Yes, yep. we did, yeah. So that's, an, uh, I think that was a previous podcast yeah, way yeah. back yeah. when, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. I think I did a Mortar Factor one. You did, yeah, um, yeah. I think that's the only one of those I've painted, though. It's just one of those. Yeah. Which one did you, you done the captain, didn't you, James? I painted the captain, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, had, I had a lot of fun with him. He was so great. Paint him however you I, like, I was painting one of them for March from a Crag, which is still on my desk over there, which yeah. didn't get finished, but... Uh, I think I've got some Blood Angel uh, shoulder pads knocking around somewhere. 
I yeah, you can't you can't stick them on these because they got moulded pads. Of course they have. Yeah. Nice. Transfers, transfers, transfers. transfers. Yes. Yeah, there you Good go. Old transfers. That will yeah. practice that. We frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world class and award winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about, and we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Seed Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalogue of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of colour schemes, miniatures, painting styles and techniques, from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy-to-follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you want to take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios. All in all, I think this is uh, an absolutely mega box. I think that anyone new getting into this, it's the, the thing I'll just caveat everything with is like the experience of getting into it with this box irrelevant of price for a second, even if it was maybe a bit more expensive or whatever, I still think experience you're going to have with all the functionality of the terrain. You've got the interesting models. You've got the easy build. You've got the bases that are sculpted. So you'd have to muck around yeah. learning how to PVA bases or use texture paint or whatever, blah, blah. Like just the experience of a new user getting into this hobby that ultimately we all want it to get more popular and grow and, and become, you know, a wider thing. It's just a better trampoline for someone to jump off of. Mm. And I think that's that that ultimately is the thing which when I first saw the box and took it in after the initial, wow, you get all these new the, those specific models, or look at the awesome new type of terrain or whatever. That's the thing which I think is the top of the list for me. It's like just if if I had this, if this style of box was the box that I got in second yeah. edition, my experience of starting it would have been I'm not saying my experience back then was terrible, but obviously it's it's yeah. it had been way better because it's designed better for someone newer getting into it. In if you've got mind. you and a buddy want to share the box, 30 quid each between oh, them. That's peanuts. That's, yeah. that's great, isn't it? I see. Yeah. If that is cheaper than actually buying a kill team oh, yeah, sort for of sure. squad, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For most of them. I so think, I mean, great. obviously we've been talking about this very, very excitedly and, you know, fair enough, GW sent it to us, but it's not that we've been paid to say this or anything. Like, no. I think part of the reason we're so excited about this is because of like what it represents. Yeah, that, yeah. That, really, that is correct. That's hundred yeah. percent it. It's literally what it represents for, about someone new getting into this mm. and the experience that they have. Um, and yeah. I think it's. Uh, I hope that this is a success and that future starter boxes look more like this. Yeah, that'd be a good yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that again, it's a hard. It's a hard. I don't thing. think everyone just wants for hobbyists and the people who are. I guess preaching all of this stuff like the loudest in our community always seem to want bigger boxes, more stuff, more plastic, mm. more discount, fair enough. But as someone who's on the outside looking in or trying to find like an entry gateway, I think seeing that much stuff in a box is really, really overwhelming. Yeah. I like the idea of there being a smaller, because they've done smaller sets in the past, yeah. but they've always been like not really complete. It'd yeah. be like, here's a little taste of 40k. You can buy this little small starter box that gives you a few yeah. marines. But once you've done that, you kind of got to like start again and get the proper yeah. box. It's always like, like you had to get a... the proper set afterwards. Yeah. This is the proper set. Yeah. yeah. I feel like this is a bit more focused and a bit more, it takes, most, most of these sets feels like it takes the pressure off a new player. It takes the pressure off painting stuff because like you said, you've got the two different colors, building stuff with glue and all the rest of it. All you got to do is clip and push them together. The terrain, all you got to do is pop it out and stick that together. And then once you've done that, 20 minutes or so into it, you can sit there and have, you and your mates can have a little And if you're book. someone like me who really, really loves the hobby side but has always struggled with the rules, mm. this gives me more time to actually focus on learning how to play the game and not because I've always run out of gas by the time I've got to that point. It's like, yeah. we'll buy the starter box, we'll get all the stuff painted, we'll yeah. get it all ready to go. And by the time I've actually done all of that, the next box has come out or the next yeah. or I've just lost interest in it. It's yeah. been so long. I, th I think it's also got a bit more longevity. And I think the reason for that is like when you, if you look to take like second, I always go to second box because that was my first I know, star right? box. Yeah. Um, once you've built that, painted it, gained with it, learned the game, I would argue that those models don't then remain your like A team when yeah. it comes to playing yeah, yeah. like you kind of like you go into shop you've got a bit of experience you've learned stuff mm. you go and buy a new box like you know etc 
these models, as you as you your experience in your collection grows, because of the nature of them and because of the detail, because of the quality of them, whatever the case may be, I think that they will still be models that are front and center in your collection. Like you, you can easily incorporate 100%. them in an army. Well, and like, equally, you know, they're like, they're usable outside of the box. Yeah, yeah. I know you yeah. kind of get that with combat patrol to a degree, but again, like it's never really been in one full set, right? Mm, and even no, when no. they've done that before, it's been like, yeah, you can make a combat patrol within it, but it's yeah. not like just combat patrol, combat patrol, but. With this, it's like you can buy it with your friend or even just for yourself. Build both of them. Even if you want to just buy it for you and you're not, even, yeah. even if you're already a kill team player, yeah. like, okay, we'll buy this because you get two full kill teams at a lower cost than buying two full kill teams. That's true. Yeah. And you're not paying extra for a starter set because if you bought one of the other starter sets, I know a lot of people who play a lot of kill team will buy the new set every year to get the new kill teams within it. Yeah. And then every year they're basically buying a new book and they're buying a load of terrain that they probably don't need. Mm. And even though it's like a good value box, you're still buying stuff you don't really care yeah. about. Whereas with this, they've stripped that back. It's just you're getting the stuff you actually are here for. The, th yeah. the thing is, I think a lot of the things that have that have ramped up costings previously, like for example, new miniatures, you get a starter box that has brand new miniatures in it. The costing of mold, the costing of the time to design, the costing of the staff that obviously they all that do all the, the the marketing, the design work for the books, the packaging, all those different departments and areas that obviously do have a, a, a costing towards the development of a product. With this, it's all it's. I think really sorry to segue it back onto the terrain. The terrain is the thing where most of the that that it, a new yeah. new spend has been done because obviously developing this all existed already. This, didn't is, it, for this two is literally years. the molds so, are done. Yeah, you just got to run them in the factory, put in a, all oh, right, maybe pay, for, I don't, actually, no, the, the sprues were the same color, weren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're so, exactly so literally, the same. it's exactly the same cost yeah. uh, as before, because oh. obviously that's been done. It, that also helps counterbalance the fact that you can release it for a, a cheaper cost. Yeah. In, um, and whether they have, maybe where they haven't reduced the profit margin or whatever, but I still think that all those factors, it's clearly been aimed for new people getting into it and giving them, as I've said, the best experience and longevity of miniatures, which mm. I think ultimately there's all those little tick boxes that there are things associated within the industry that people do not like as in, oh, I've got to buy this now again, or, I've got to buy this now again, or, I've got to buy this now again. And it just gives those inherently all those things more longevity for your mm. your hobby and your collection. So, what, what do you think a box like this, if, if we've set this as like the new benchmark going forward, what do you think, for example, with 40K, some an equivalent of this could look like? Would it be like a combat patrol versus a combat patrol with a bunch of MDF what is it, terrain? What, a 40K starter box? Yeah, like I'm trying mm. to I'm trying to take like the, the sort of foundation principles of this box set. <laughs> How would that work? Well, that's a bigger system? game system. Well, it? it's a bigger game system, but I also think as well, like that that's where the expenditure for new molds, new products, new things is warranted because you want to to light the fire and kindle that fire of the new edition if that makes sense mm. and you need hooks to then sell that product if that makes sense like you know if you're um i know obviously a lot of the starter boxes tend to have marines in them because they are the most pop one of the most popular factions just or a starter faction or whatever you want to however you want to put it um but i think that's when you do have a slightly higher price point because you've got stuff in there that is new that has had upfront costs that does need to be recouped by obviously as a company um but uh, th this is kind of what I was getting to is with this, they're obviously not new miniatures. That's right. Does yeah. a starter box need to have new stuff in it every single not time? Not when they're as cool as these miniatures. Well, this is the thing. So I, th I think that a, a really good balance would be, uh, if you look at some of the new faction releases, and obviously I'm going to say it in the most biased statement ever, but if you look at the, the Blood Angel box that came mm. recently, you had pre-existing models in there. So you had Assault Intercessors uh, and Jump Intercessors. And then you had two characters, which were the new shiny thing. Which yeah, but the then what the... you end up with is people that just want those new characters are forced to buy other stuff they might already have. If you get what yeah, I'm saying. I guess so. Mm. There is that. I as don't. Well. I personally don't love that side of things. I think you kind of do it one way or the other. It's like here's a load of new or stuff. Go all in, or just or, or don't. here's yeah. stuff yeah. that's already yeah. out. I like the idea of there being like a new 40k starter set. It's like. Because they're models that have been out for a while, potentially as well. There's no like FOMO stuff around it, and because they perhaps can take a bigger hit on the margin because it's a, mo a set that's been out but, for a while. But then, at what point do you have what? At what point is the hook for pay people to buy it that buy that new edition launch? Is it is it the the rule book because uh, they're going to do in? But this isn't on, not this isn't online. a new edition. Yeah, no, no, but no, this no, isn't but a new edition of Kill Team. You said about putting this principle on like a new edition release. Well, I'm not it, saying a new edition release. I'm just saying other game systems. Oh, okay, fine. Well, the thing is, either way, like a, a lot of the a lot of the rules going more digital and free access, which is mm. the way that we're seeing it go. At what point 
what is the thing then that hooks that hooks that consumer or that buyer into purchasing that new that new box or that new starter box? You need something in there, and I think the only thing with, that like with this, it's the fact that they were harder to find models yeah. that are now a really good value for money uh, cost for the box. But you, I'd argue you, if you're a new player, you don't really care if they were previously available or not. Well, you don't. Well, the no. thing is, someone new coming to this doesn't. They just they see amazing know. new miniatures and yeah. a great a great cost for the box. It's like yeah, double thumbs up. With with it's a hard thing because you've got different consumer bases to try and fulfil with that. You've got new people and you've got also people that have been into the hobby for a long time that maybe didn't have these models that then want to get these models. But even then, so, we've seen so, this is this is why this box is so interesting to me because it's like Paul's got these models already. Mm. We've painted them already before, and we're all excited for it. Yeah. Like, oh, we can do it again. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree, guess it's just because they're the heroes' models; they're just the individuals. Yeah. I don't know why, but like some part of my brain, because I look because I'm not looking at one big sprue with ten models on it. I'm looking at one, one sprue one. with one model yeah. I just see it like more individualized yeah. even though you could make this if this was the exact same set but all of those models were on one, one sprue I would n I don't know why but I would not look at this set in the same way yeah. maybe I don't know I mean yeah that, that, that's perception of it I, I, I just think that like it's it's proof to a lot of the people that are out there that obviously look we know that the that there's a uh, thing with cost and, and, and costing the miniatures obviously from, from different companies etc but what I would say is that this is proof that it is possible to do a really good value starter box with fantastic mm. miniatures and all, what I'd say is hopefully this is the start of something that as we've seen the industry and hobby grow this becomes a norm like we see really good value boxes like this and I think that's something ultimately which should be the positive to take from it massively is that this it's more than possible yeah and also it's got creativity in there with, again, I'm, I've said it multiple times. I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but it's got creativity in there with things like experimenting with a different format of terrain. Mm. Like that makes it very interesting for me. And and like, I, I think if we see lots of boxes like this moving forward, I think it's only going to make the industry better and everyone's experience yeah. of getting into it or a new game. Like, yeah. I, I, I do I, think I, everyone should be excited about this release, whether they're interested in buying it or whether they're interested in Kill Team or not. I do think everyone should be excited about this just because of what it represents for the well, future. There's lots of positive ramifications that come from it. Like, you know, if imagine they done something similar to this. Like, I love Necromunda. Like, Necromunda for me is something I'm very interested in. Imagine if they'd done like a Necromunda starter box that had maybe some pre-existing gangs in there or maybe some limited models that, that that weren't available as much as often or whatever the case may be i'd love to get into that in a way that it's a it's a not a, a huge massive financial investment but it yeah. also makes it interesting and exciting to get into it for a, a lesser cost if that makes sense yeah you know without a sacrifice of quality in the miniatures or, or what you actually get in the box in itself um i think as well given that most people at the moment are feeling the pinch yeah, financially as well because of all sorts of different things. Um, this is like hopefully a bit of a sort of a wink and a nod to them as well. But it shows that it's possible. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And I think that's that ultimately is one of the one of the things. I think the fact that it's bit that like it's almost like it's bit people have been listened to, and it's like right, we want a really good box, and and we want it to be good value for money, and we want it to have some fantastic miniatures in it, and be an easy way to get into the game, whether you're new or old or whatever the case may be. It kind of just feels that like. It's been like, yes, we understand. And they've I, they've been think... trying it for a good few years, I think, and they've been getting closer and closer and closer. But for mm. me, this is the best iteration of that accessibility value thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, mm. yeah They've clearly been trying harder and harder to make it accessible for newbies. This, I think, is their best crack well, at it. The thing is, is, as there's more releases of models, like, this is why the heroes are really good. Maybe what we, what we see moving forward is like a hero release for a faction. Yeah. And then... They go away for a bit and then a new starter box or something comes along and imagine if they done, this is what I was saying to you, like Necromunda, for example, or like any game like, like Warcry or like whatever, they do like a heroes for Necromunda. So they do some like gangers for like whatever gang that are a, a hero release or they do a war band for Warcry that's a hero release. Yeah. But we've just seen, funny enough, we've just seen announced on Warcom about the, the Stormcast storm heroes. Terms, so like, yeah. do you see what I mean? So that could be a good way of, if you want them and they're exclusive, there's a period of time where you get them. And if you, you know, you want to get them, that's one way of doing it. And then like some time goes by. And then as long as like the demographic of the community acclimatized to that and they know, well, okay, the FOMO aspect of it disappears because it's like, okay, well, they're a hero release. So there might be a box in the future where those two hero things are merged together and create a starter some box. So set, yeah. like it's, it's a really good way of being able to do that and, and offer that great value 
without a mitigation of quality or experience, which mm. I think is, is, is really important. Nice. Yeah. Have you got a favorite character from a book or piece of artwork and thought to yourself, if only that had a miniature? Custom Service is our character creation brand here at Siege Studios. Custom Service is not just a kit bash. We create miniatures using traditional hand sculpting alongside conversion for entirely unique and bespoke miniatures that will blow you away. Our talented team of sculptors methodically and meticulously bring your thoughts into reality with the precise, refined and sharp work you'd expect from a digital sculpt and pair that with our world-class painting team for an incredible display piece you'll be proud to own. To bring your character to life and get a quote now, head to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. Okay, uh, new segment that we're trying out on the podcast. We always talk about the news and what's going on in various sections of preamble and main topic, but I thought it'd be nice to consolidate it all in one place. Uh, so this is now the news. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely not going to get old uh, really, really quick. Yeah, it's got old. Um, first up on the list, uh, Warhammer Heroes Series 5, as James alluded to earlier, uh, they're going with the Stormcast Eternals. So, like the first set of heroes is obviously Space Marines. I think it was Mark Seven, uh, Mark Seven Marines. Yeah, they were the like yeah. upscaled up, tactical like, ones. Yeah. So it makes perfect sense for the like the first heroes for Age of Sigmar to be Stormcast as they're kind of like the poster boys or Marine equivalent, I yeah. suppose. That like you know within Age of Sigmar. So um, it's nice to see that they're doing it. Um, as I alluded to earlier, it'd be really interesting if they did that for multiple different game systems that they do. Like you know, if they done like a Warcry one. This has opened done, the door like, for a, that, I think. Yeah, it's I a think bit cool so. as well, actually, mm. because. Part of why I always loved the heroes boxes, maybe less so when it's been Space Marines in the past, but is the idea of I can have a little taster model of a faction, yeah, but like just one, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? I can just yeah, buy yeah. one, and here's my one Stormcast Eternal, and I can try painting Stormcast yeah. Eternal. So I think that's quite fun, and that they have a bit more time lavished on the sculpts and things than yeah, yeah. their other counterparts. Do, so do you know the thing great. that I think it's quite interesting about like just the hero ranges in general? It's like you know I I. I where I've said in the past about, like, I kind of need to eat my own words a little bit here. And I'm quite happy to do that. Like where I've said that, like a lot of the newer kits lack that variance of like pose or flexibility. This is actually, these hero models are actually really good for them, like just slotting in a unit. So for example, mm. jumping onto like the Justian, if you've got an eliminator squad, the guy, the eliminator that's in there is like great to just swap into your squad to mm. vary up that unit and make it look different to other yeah. cut and paste eliminator units in other armies. Same with all the others, other models, same with the, 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 the death guard. And, I, and what I would actually like to see is as they release more ranges of hero models that it just gives you way more choice to then go, well, I'll just get this hero model, put that in that unit. That makes yeah. that different and like, so on and so forth. I think that's Gives you like a, a fancier sergeant. Yeah, exactly. Like that, yeah. 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 It's, I think it's a really good way of doing that and adding that, that richness of interest to, 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 to your army or to your unit or to even to like, even to your kill team. Like for example, if you've done mm. a different Marine kill team and you just done it, you could pick one of, pick one of these ones and include that. And that would just make it a bit more different and varied. Um, yeah, and I th again, I, any new plastic, I'm always keen about, yeah. you know, whether it's the 40K or, or Age of Sigma or any of the other games or manufacturers that are out there. But I just think, yeah, the opportunity of choice, I think, is is a good thing. And I think that that's what heroes represent for me. Like, am I massively into Age of Sigma? Probably not at the moment. Like, it's just not, I'm just heavily invested in 40K. But like I always say, as a palette cleanser, if you mm. want that single model that's totally different, obviously Stormcast is still armored like Marines, but... If you let's just say you don't collect marines and you and you collect Sylvan F or you collect like yeah. uh, or like Tyranids or whatever and you just want something totally different to what you normally paint and and there's no waste exactly like you have yeah. not buy big sprues this is it yeah. having the single sprue is like the yeah. best thing and you know and like we've already said it like imagine I don't know what those sprues obviously are going to look like but imagine like you get multiple, head, no, I think multiple they're, heads they're, on these they're going to be red aren't they I think they're gonna, are they going to be red plastic I don't know I no what I mean is like you get different heads mm. on these you so get like, a couple you, don't you, yeah. you still get an opportunity to make it a little yeah. bit unique for you by the part that's that's on I there I see what I'm I'm secretly hoping for in the Age of Sigma Heroes series is a Skaven set. Yep. I think that'd be great. Yeah. I'd, I mean, they're already really character yeah, anyway. Can you yeah. imagine like turning that up to 11 for yeah. Skaven? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be amazing. So I think, yeah. I've, yeah, I think that'd be quite a cool set to get hold of. So, yeah, come on, GW. Nice. Also yeah, on my list <laughs> in the spirit of uh, new models, two mm -hmm. more. Uh, Eldar finally got a new model. I know, right? Oh boy. Oh my goodness. Is it, is oh it boy. Fugan? Fugan, yeah. The Phoenix Fugan? Lord. Yeah, what an amazing miniature. Um, yeah, I love Phoenix Lords. Always have done. Obviously, we've done yeah. a custom service, Carandrus and uh, Margan Ra. Like, I absolutely love Phoenix Lords. They are like the Eldar 
I don't want to say baby Primarchs, but that's kind of what they are. Like they mm. they are like the head of a faction within a faction. So like they're the the, the leader of like the, the the striking scorpions or like the dark reapers or like, and so F Fugan is an amazing miniature. Like just his backstory and like okay, like I absolutely love it. And I think the fire pike and axe is a great. I was going to say, is, like, he a, is he a fire dragon? Fire name? dragon, fire yeah, dragons, fire yeah. dragon. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a fitting sword. He's he's, he's he's just mega as a character and. Um, I tell you what, that model, I really think you're going to see a lot of that at comps because it is abso it's cool. absolutely amazing, the pose on it. And um, just really, really, it, do you know, I will always say this when it comes to like revisioning of previous characters that have got mm. a lot of heritage and a lot of backstory. Honouring the previous model and updating it, nodding hard to the one. So there's that 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 you can see the the progression from the old model to the new one mm. and it keeps all the heritage and all that. with this model they've nailed it. It it looks absolutely phenomenal. And yeah. I I just want to paint it. Like, yeah, it's very cool. It does look good. Um that yeah. Kodama as well looks it's great. Looks great. I, I love I love the paint job. Um I think it's uh I can't remember, I I'm not sure who's painted I think it might be Tom Winstone from Heavy Metal but the the transition on the head crest is just absolutely beautiful. Like the subtlety of the black mm. to red or red to black on there is just really, really nice. Um and, and yeah, like it's just absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Um so so yeah. Nice. And then yeah. uh finally it's the the red gobbo as is I know another Christmas tradition. special there. It's a fantastic yeah. model, isn't he? I think I think it's the, it's the it's the uh, one of the best puns they've done. The abominable snowman. Yeah, a bomb I, in a, like I a love yeah, it's great. the fact you can take the top off. I know, yeah, and it's got the bomb. Yeah. Um, like I think whoever designed it has been has been had a very they have very good fun with these, don't yeah, they? Yeah, very yeah, very yeah. good fun. I think had a childhood of putting stones in ice uh, in, yeah. in snowballs, snowballs by and, the sounds yeah, of it. Yeah, it's got like a grenade thing, yeah. in like a grenade in like a snowball, which is just hilarious. But I think that's do you know that's one of the models that every year you get to the end of the year, it's coming up to Christmas, and like it's really nice to have like a comedic kind of like it's just no rules, really, really fun release. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like because I didn't realize he was like quite he's quite a big character. Actor, isn't he the big go but uh, and i think they've i don't know they've recently released some more books with him in it so i think they'll be quite cool like little anthologies of stories we'll, we'll have to get adam things. to put this one in the snow globe as well i think the, i think it's somewhere and i think it's up on the shelf yeah. somewhere yeah. but we've got we'll get it back right out when we do the world. christmas decor yeah, yeah. The <laughs> previous the previous year's <laughs> one is in the snow globe but yeah like it's just a it's just a really cool fun miniature that again that's a perfect model to just get have no real like hard emotional investment into it yeah. and just have fun painting it. And I think that's something that I'll tell you what I'd quite like to see is a Christmas one as well. You know, you get like a, a, a nice wing back chair, like a tartan pattern <laughs> with a space marine falling asleep, spilling his glass of eggnog or whatever and, and a mince pie. <laughs> Has to be a know. space wolf, surely. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah what you know, crumbs. You know, <laughs> it's got a blanket. Beard, yeah. It's got a blanket. Over you could, his legs I tell you what, as a on. conversion project, you could get the dead Terminator from Space Hulk, and that would make an amazing. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you could. Yeah, that would make an amazing. Yeah, you could um, do, but I think that'd be quite cool. You know, nice little wing back. Yeah, <laughs> sat there. Yeah, yeah. agree. Nice, no, good set of models for mm. this. Uh, this, this, the first ever news update. So yeah. It's, uh, uh, well, lastly on the news, uh, we're I guess starting to tease out. We obviously do our monthly painting challenges, and don't worry, we'll be doing October in next episode. Uh, but obviously, I hate to say it, but 2025 is on the horizon, and it's it's coming oh, in fast. Just around so the corner, isn't it? New year, new painting challenges. New year, new painting challenges. So yeah. we said we were going to change these every single year, and we've got some good ideas, I think. Mm, but yeah. uh, most importantly, we want to hear from you in the comments of what you would like the monthly painting challenge pun names and for themes each month. for each month to be. So let us know in the comments uh, any of your ideas. Uh, we've had some great ones already, but we would love maybe this episode can be a bit of a base to find some of those if you've got any good ideas. The puns are important, yeah, right? They really I cannot are. understate that. The puns are important. But you're going to keep October. You can't so, really well, change yeah, that, I was going to say, you? there's two that have to stay in mm. just because uh, number one, October is just like, it is just yeah. set in concrete. Everyone, that's, yeah. And also Nick Baton from GW will absolutely like Go go atomic if we don't keep March McCrag. So yeah. so like, they're two iconic ones that I would say the community at large is already a part of. Yeah, so we'll, yeah. we'll have to partake. But we would love the the siege monthly painting challenges uh, to to mix up every year. Otherwise, Chuck, the best ones in because the thing is I've done two. I've done a story on on our Instagram and I had some really really good replies on there already. So there's been quite a few people that have gone. Oh, I got this idea. This idea. I think a good thing would be not to try and not repeat ones from previous year. Yeah, yeah. Like if they come back. The year after next, that's maybe not so bad, but like I think we and want also, to we want to try and vary it quite a bit. And also, don't forget, we love a rule bend. Oh yeah, right? we do hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> so don't, it's not like <laughs> set in stone. Okay, yeah. so if, yeah. just because it's you know September, maybe maybe it's up to you to decide what 
Black Templars are. There's, there's I mean? white yeah. Templars. There's, there's there's loads of different there's green Templars, Templars, silver Templars, Templars, red Templars, orange like, Templars. <laughs> you go everything. Tartan Templars. Tartan Templars. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so do let us know in the comments for that. And also, if you have any suggestions for for future news segments on the podcast, we'd like it to be like the good news, positive section of the podcast. So if you've got any maybe like charity events or yeah, local gaming clubs, there's some stuff going on, some good news in in your hobby bubble that you'd like to share with the the community at large, then. Let us know in the comments and hopefully we can shout some of those out in the future. Yeah. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please leave it in the comments down below. This week, question comes from uh, Dean Farley, who says, how do you go about combining old and new models into a cohesive army when the model style and quality can be vastly different? I've recently dug out my old Warhammer Fantasy Battle Orcs and Goblins army and have purchased some new Black Orcs. I'm trying to bring the old stuff up to scratch for the old world and finding it a time-consuming challenge. It's hard. Definitely hard. Because the, obviously the quality of models has increased and new Black Orcs, uh, obviously I think they're plastic if memory serves correct. Um, that was my stomach. <laughs> wow. It is hard. Sounds like you've got yeah. an orc in there. Yeah. It is hard as uh, as models have got better in the quality since they uh, since times past. Mingling them in and hiding them in together to get a cohesive force is, is, is difficult. It just is something that, that unfortunately, just due to the progression of miniatures and design and CAD and all this stuff, it just it just makes it harder. But I think there's things you can do, like um you, like specifically like with size as well, like you can put models on bigger, like higher bases to like balance out the height or the size. Obviously, scale is another factor, but um like even in humans we're all different heights we're all different builds we're all, like you have a nice variance of variance of like uh, that's just, just... why you stand on a rock when you stand next to <laughs> exactly. that's why i bring a tactical rock into work with me. you can't yeah. see it off camera yeah. james, yeah. james is on a booster seat, on a right, booster now. seat right now yeah 100 <laughs> yeah um, i actually think um one of the things that's interesting with this is when you're like doing it as in like painting the models and they're on your desk in front of you mm. it can seem more exaggerated than it will when you've got the army done and they're all on the table and you're looking at it from three feet yeah. away. Well, it's like, sure. it's like Peachy said, it's about the spectacle and like sure. you, and mm. those little nuances get lost in the spectacle. Unless if you're looking at it with a very granular approach, then obviously you're going to notice things like that. But I think there's a lot of things you can do with painting as well. Like as long as your painting is cohesive and like if you know, like the weathering's the same or the markings are the same or like the- They'll feel the same. They'll, 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 they'll give off the same vibe and like, you know, I think that having that variance is what develops the character. And I think that that's really what makes everyone's collections their own. I think because mm, yeah. ultimately a box of incessors or a box of black orcs or an old Mordheim war band or whatever, all those models, like there's lots of duplicates of those all out in the hobby. And like what you do to it in, in the basing, in the painting, in the conversion, in the, it's any sculpting, any freehand, that's what creates that character for you. So I think that's, don't look at it as, in my mind, don't look at it as a negative. Look at it as a silver lining that gives your miniatures and your collection its own, its own, sorry, sorry to use the word heritage again, but it's your own, your own heritage no, you of, of miniatures. Mm. That's, that's the way that I would look at it. I think one thing that I'm trying to do just in the hobby in general, which I think maybe slightly relates to this in terms of mindset is just, I can be a bit of a perfectionist to my detriment. And it was, I was thinking about this earlier when you said about like how when you're painting a squad, and you get to the fifth one and then the first one doesn't quite match. One thing I'm trying to do just in general with the hobby now is just being okay with stuff, not being exactly perfect all the time. Yeah. Hmm. At the end of the day, they are plastic soldiers and, you know, space toys and whatnot. Like hmm. as much as you can try to do to make it immersive, it is really, really fun in an art sense and standpoint. But like, especially when it comes to gaming, like not everything has to be completely perfect it's perfectly okay yeah you bought those models and they're the old ones and these models are the new ones they're not perfectly identical like i think the easiest thing to do with a lot of this stuff is just being okay with it not being like 100 percent right yeah because once you take that pressure off yourself it's like it's that you've made a problem that's not there do you know what i mean at the end of the day they're orcs in your orc army on the table they're painted they look nice they will match yeah that's like, a horse army that, yeah, be well, i was gonna say great. like 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 you mentioned because you can make orcs. the other argument of if, if even if they all perfectly matched and they're all from the exact same set maybe you painted the first one then it wasn't as good as the fifth one and then how far do you go yeah and i think the other thing is like look like you you mentioned orcs as you said like it's the army that you're collecting but orcs would not be like a rank and file group of ultramarines like they, well, they hilariously like when all they, 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 they would be ragged like if you watch lord of the rings or watch any like film like that 
they are very ragtag. They have different mm. armor colors, scavenge parts. Their their clothing is different colors. Like you know, everyone the, wants continuity, like, but when stuff's too continuous, everyone complains they look the same. It's like if you had a whole bunch of tactical marines all in the exact same pose, all painted perfectly identically, everyone would go, "Well, they look the same. That's boring." Yeah, but then okay, everyone's always like so. striving for this perfection, and they want everything to match. Be I was thinking, especially with an orc army, especially for sort of Age of Sigma and things like that. Like if you've got a unit of orcs, I in my head, this is although you've got them on the table in like this nice sort of block or whatever. I could just imagine this ball of arms, legs, and all <laughs> limbs and knives and blades just sort of barreling towards the enemy. Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you remember you see those cartoons where you see the rabble of people and the smoke? Just, just like, legs yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly that. just yeah. a big ball of smoke so, with some yeah. limbs hanging yeah. out. Yeah. So, yeah, I think um, even though the miniatures are all sort of, sort of different, I think on the table, I think they'll all look sort of great together. Yeah, I think that I think that will and like other things like we said about basing and like uh, you know all those little things that mm. and, and if the, that the painting does a lot of work of course as it well, does yeah, for tying 100%. everything together. Yeah, yeah, I mean completely like while I was venturing into the Mordian army I've got some plastic ones that I've made like some yeah. inverted plastics and I put those next to the metal ones and yes they're uh, like a decade or so apart from each other but once they're painted and like if you if you just raise the base slightly on the old, well, and if you had thirty whatever, like, of them and they're all on the table and you're stood three and a half feet away, you're not going to notice. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're not going to notice. And I, you know, unless you're that granular looking at them. And the thing is, it's like it, it's your knowledge, your inherent sort of like super granular knowledge of all those miniatures that are in your collection. You'll obviously think of that, but the person just walking by or the person playing a game across the table from you. If they've got a really in-depth model knowledge, they might go, "Oh, that's a that's a fifth edition orc, mm. or a black orc there, or whatever." But ultimately, like I think that's what adds that that person might look at it and go, well, "That's amazing that you've got those old models." I was in just going to say, you know, like, like, you know, so well, and everyone else isn't going to look at stuff with the same scrutiny that you're going to look at your exactly, own stuff, exactly, exactly, because you know yeah. where all the imperfections yeah. are. But someone yeah. else probably is going to look at that and be like, "Wow, that orc arm is amazing." I was just going to yeah. say the same thing. You you're so critical of your own. We all, we're all like that. We all like yeah, that. Yeah, we all like that. But yeah. anyone else would just go, oh, "Look at that. That's awesome." And not see the same things that you see. So, yeah. Yeah. which is what I was trying to say earlier with yeah. just being okay with stuff not being yeah. perfect because you know, especially yeah. when other people. I think that's actually makes it more fun and more challenging when you have older models and newer models mixed together. It's like my job is to make this block of infantry cohesive, cohesive yeah. and w- whether that's like variance individually in the unit or whether it's like they're a rank and file and they all. I think that's that's what makes it really fun is actually the challenge of making them all fit in together. Mm. That that is something to 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 try and beat if that makes sense yeah um so don't see it as a negative see it as a positive and understand that people maybe aren't going to look at it as granular as you will and there's nothing wrong with looking at granular because you want you care about what you're painting and what you're doing that's obvious so so yeah so i would i would just try and flip it and also see it as a bit of a challenge to make it look really good well i mean he's sort of saying it's a time it's a time consuming challenge but i suppose um you got to paint them anyway, though. Yeah, you got to paint. Yeah, so it's, it's finding a way to enjoy that time-consuming challenge as well. Yeah, so finding it too too yeah. much, maybe. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I think that ultimately you've got to spend the time and invest the time into painting them anyway. Mm. So just find the best way to spend that time to make them look as cohesive as possible. That's the that's the that's the way that I'd approach it. Nice. Okay. Our other weekly tradition on the podcast is, of course, hobby hacks. Is where we share a little. Hobby hack, a quick tip with you, uh, product recommendation, painting techniques, something like that, uh, that you can incorporate into your hobby. Uh, mm. Paul, I think you've got one. Well, it's, yeah, this is a kind of a tip that I've sort of adopted myself, whether it's anyone else will find this handy, I don't know. But I think <laughs> that's the beauty of hobby hacks, Paul. They're always very, yeah, very well, niche and so. they're very, <laughs> very <laughs> difficult to implement. Yeah, maybe like my go crazy mental with color. Yeah, <laughs> tip. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I, from the last episode where we I sort of was talking about the difficulties I was sort of having with painting my edge highlights on my Space Marine armor and then find sort of coming to the conclusion that the paint was disappearing or whatever. Um, but actually it was just looking at those miniatures in normal light levels and not under a lamp because we spoke about, well, your, your models are going to look like under a lamp because that's how you're painting them with that lighting. So I, I someone else sort of said, well, once you've painted something, an area or whatever, take it into other light sources. So I don't know, go in your garden or whatever, or go to, or even just get, like go to where you're going to generally be playing your games. Yeah, and have a look at the miniature and that or that area that you've painted in that light level. Yeah, 
I think that's part of why highlights are often so exaggerated and contrast is always really, really high yeah. on miniatures, I think, comes from that. I was going to say, it's, it's both, the, ends of, both ends of the spectrum with that because yeah. you, could, you could put it under your painting lamp and the paint you're using could look really, really vibrant. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Mm, and then you yeah. go outside and you're like, there's, there's hardly a highlight on that. Well, that's, that's what I mean. The <laughs> point was, I was going to make was that, obviously, if, you, if you're looking at this in a normal sort of situational light level, in your ambient light level, you can then see, well, I need to put, perhaps push that highlight mm -hmm. even higher to make it stand out. But I, I guess as well, obviously, this three and a half feet thing from the, the gaming table, um, it, you're not going to see those anyway. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's just another way of sort of saying, right, well, I'll, I'll have a look at this in another light source and see how it looks there. And then that will let me know if I need to push that highlight even yeah. more, add more to it. Can I, can I hobby hack your hobby hack? Jump oh, on the hack. Hackception? Is so, that a thing? Hackception. <laughs> Hackception. <laughs> Something that I like to do when I need like that fresh eyes effect on a model. Yeah. Get someone else to paint it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ultimate hack. Fresh arms, fresh <laughs> eyes. No um, skill. <laughs> uh, one thing I like to do is go outside. I know we all fear the outside <gasps> in this hobby, but is, is to go outside yeah. and we've got plenty of cloudy overcast days in the UK, which is really True great that. for this. Yeah. Uh, just going outside and taking a photo of the model in like soft ambient sunlight. Yeah. Gotcha. Taking a photo there because you often find that it's quite flattering to the model in a nice way, but yeah. not exaggerated that the way that like a bright hobby lamp is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then going back inside, putting the model down and then looking at the photo that you took of the model outside. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, totally. Obviously you can look at it outside in your hand. That's fair enough. But I find that when you look at a photo, obviously I can pinch and zoom in and look at that. Head. Yeah, Much can't do that in real life, can you? Exactly. Like, well, I don't know, working. <laughs> uh, also, uh, another little one for, for so what I've decided to do is um, with every painting project that I do now, I, I try and learn a new little technique. Yeah, it's good. So um, obviously with the, you know, the sort of some sort of future distant goal of sort of progressing as I, I go along, I thought that one way to do that is to learn something new for every project. Yeah. So like the lieutenant I did, it was like the, the leather mm -hmm. sort of technique there. That was quite cool. And then perhaps at some point in the future, you can put all those little techniques together or just add them along as you go. Mm -hmm. And then I guess learning those little, all those little techniques add, add them all to, together. to something much bigger at the end, I suppose. That's good because then that miniature, you look at it and you go, oh, well, that's the model that I learned how to do. Yeah. leather like that on it or that's the model how I learned to do X or whatever. Like that, they're really good. They're, they're great sort of like, I always say it's like, they're like moments in time captured. And yeah, it's really it gives you more. It gives you more connection to that to that miniature yeah. because you that model isn't just painted for the sake of painting it. It's painted with a purpose, yeah. which then translates to you actually developing your skill and ability, which then you can move forward with onto another piece. Like you said, you can put yeah, all yeah. those things together and create something that that is mark two of that. I've, I've got plenty yeah. of examples of that. Like I can, uh, top of my head, like models that I've kept, there was the um, Deathly Hallows Captain that I painted. That to me is the first time I properly understood heavy metal edge highlights. Mm -hmm. There was the um, Night Relicter that I started painting for GD. That was the first time that I tried proper non-metallic metal on fabric. Um, same with that, with like doing sculpted basing. Like there's loads of projects that I can kind of pinpoint in time and be like, that's where I learned the thing. Yeah. I might also as well, because I've started to put the, put the sort of, not the exact date, but sort of the month and the year under on, on the bottoms of the bases. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So that I can kind of... Oh, that's cool. That's really like cool. Yeah, no, that's cool. great. I don't know why I don't think to do that. That's great, well, yeah. It's like, not like a... There not, you go. I, I don't see many people doing it, but I thought... No, well, it's a really sensible idea because on the yeah. bottom of the base, you're never going to see it anyway. No, and how yeah. often do we forget when we've done stuff? We're like, oh yeah, that was like five years ago. Honestly, yeah. cool. you like, so you, you'd, be, you'd like triple hack bonanza <laughs> this week. Like, honestly. Why just sort of... Why am I not doing this? Well, when did I paint that? And I thought, well, why don't I just jot it on the bottom. No, that's great. Then, that's a great idea. You've got, paint, you got a paintbrush in your hand. Yeah, paint, so paint it on the other side of the A little bit of white paint. And, you yeah. know, just, and also, and practice your free hand. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. We're teeing them up this week. Yeah. Uh, okay. On that note, we'll, uh, we'll round it out there. Thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. We're going to jump over into the post show now for our patrons. So if you want to get more bonus content for the, for the podcast in your life, check the link in the description to our Patreon and you can find more details over there. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Non-metallic metal has nothing to do with your painting ability. Mm. But I thought, like a bit of a Muppet, I'm an okay painter. I think I I'll work that. this out. Yeah. And I painted it, but it didn't look like metal because all the highlights were wrong. <laughs>